terminal velocity. So we've discussed that when uh, objects are falling and there's some air resistance, at first the uh, motion is uh, accelerating motion uh, due to the force of gravity. But as the object goes faster and faster, the air resistance force gets larger. And at some point we have this uh, transition and after the transition, the object falls with uh, uniform motion, so it's moving at constant speed. So uh, what happens is the uh, when the air resistance force is large enough that it balances the force of gravity, then the, uh, the net force is zero, and so by the law of acceleration, the acceleration will be zero, and so the uh, speed stops changing and we've reached the maximum uh, velocity for falling. So we call that the terminal velocity. So uh, terminal velocity depends on various uh, things. Uh, one of the obvious ones would be uh, for s the given size and shape, uh, the more that an object uh, weighs, the higher the terminal velocity because the more air resistance force we need uh, to match that weight. So if we have uh, a block of wood that's the same uh, size and shape as a brick, the brick weighs more and so when we drop the two uh, the terminal velocity for the uh, uh, wooden uh, block is going to be slower than the terminal velocity for the brick which will be uh, higher. Uh, now, uh, for uh, a given weight, the larger the surface area, <clears throat> the slower the terminal velocity. So the skydiver, um, before opening the parachute, has a rather high terminal velocity, but after opening the parachute, the, the weight hasn't changed, but the surface area has increased quite a bit. And so, um, to match the parachutist's weight, uh, the uh, parachute doesn't have to move very fast because air resistance is large when the surface area is large. So uh, let's look at something simple like a falling coffee filter. So here's a little quick video. And if we track the distance fallen, uh, we see that at first it's a bit of a parabolic curve but then uh, rather quickly it becomes a straight line and we know that in the motion graph when we have a straight line we're traveling with constant speed. So for a sheet of paper or a leaf uh, the terminal velocity is about uh, five feet per second which translates to uh, two to three inches per frame and that terminal velocity is reached uh, rather quickly, so uh, the accelerating motion is only for about the first uh, four frames, and then uh, the uh, something like a leaf or a sheet of paper uh, travels, if it's falling, uh, just straight down under uh, the force of air resistance. Uh, let's look at a different object, a uh, cat. So this is some video reference that one of my students shot. They were, they were asked to record a falling object and do some data analysis. And uh, he, he chose uh, his cat. Uh, they had to do five drops for reference. So. Cat's tail is up, so it seems to be enjoying that. Uh, so, uh, doing some frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the falling motion, we see pretty much a uh, parabolic arc. And it turns out for a distance of just a few feet, uh, air resistance is not significant for a cat. Uh, on the other hand, if a cat fell out an eight-floor window, in a building, so falling from a height of about 100 feet, uh, then after falling about 50 feet, 
uh, the cat would be falling fast enough that it would reach its terminal velocity, uh, which for um, an average sized cat is roughly 40 miles an hour. And so after falling about four, maybe five floors, uh, the cat reaches this maximum speed and continues traveling at that same speed. So you see that um, it doesn't matter whether the cat falls out of a um, fourth floor window or a 40th floor window because it reaches terminal velocity. After about uh, 50 feet, it just continues traveling at constant speed uh, until it reaches the ground. Now, uh, that was for an average sized cat, but if we have um, a small cat versus a large cat, uh, the large cat will have a higher terminal velocity than the small cat. In fact, if we have two things that have similar shape and composition, uh, then the larger one has the higher terminal velocity. Of course, the larger one uh, weighs more, but you might also wonder, well, the larger one also has a larger area, so perhaps that, that compensates for the weight, but, um, but it, it doesn't. Uh, the larger weight of the larger cat has a more significant effect than its size, and so it, um, or its surface area, so it does indeed fall uh, faster than the small cat. Now, um, very small animals like uh, squirrels, uh, they reach their terminal velocity after falling about one floor, and uh, that speed is normally not fast enough to be, to be fatal, so uh, squirrels are rather fearless uh, in terms of falls because they uh, seem to know that uh, a fall uh, no matter what height, uh, normally won't uh, be fatal. Uh, on the other hand, cats um, survive high falls about uh, half the time, and uh, humans uh, rarely survive if we reach uh, terminal velocity, because that uh, terminal velocity is 120 to 140 miles an hour. So unless you fall into something very soft, like a net um, a fall, uh, from um, traveling at that speed uh, is normally lethal. Now, you can uh, estimate the terminal velocity for an object if you can estimate the wind speed that would be needed to uh, support it. So here's a little example with a ping pong ball. So you see that the um, uh, hair dryer is uh, blowing at a speed, air speed that is fast enough that it is supporting the uh, ping pong ball. And so uh, that means that the ping pong ball has a terminal velocity uh, roughly equal to that uh, air speed. Uh, we can do a similar thing with uh, people. If we have a, a very large fan, so uh, this is an indoor facility where there's a chamber and beneath the floor there's a very large fans that blow air at a high speed, about 100 to 140 miles an hour, and that provides enough force uh, to uh, support the weight of people. So this is very similar to uh, skydiving, and you see that by changing uh, your area, you can either increase the force or decrease the force and move up and down. So, in uh, summary, uh, when the force of air resistance on a falling object balances the object's weight, that object will fall at a constant speed, and we call that the terminal velocity. For a given size and shape, the object that weighs more has a higher terminal velocity, so the wooden board uh, has a slower terminal velocity than the brick uh, if the two are the same size and shape. Uh, for a given weight, the object with the smaller surface area has a higher terminal velocity. So the parachutist um, or the skydiver before opening the parachute has a higher terminal velocity. After opening the parachute, they have more surface area, so they have a slower terminal velocity. 
Uh, two things of similar composition and shape. The larger one has the higher terminal velocity, so the larger cat has the higher terminal velocity than the small cat or the squirrel. And uh, you can estimate terminal velocity as the wind speed needed to support an object's weight. So hopefully that helps you understand uh, falling motion when uh, terminal velocity is uh, reached. So we'll uh, continue looking more about motion through uh, air and even through water in uh, some of the upcoming tutorials where we will be talking about uh, pressure and we'll also talk about aerodynamic lift in those. So uh, see you then.